If you've ever wondered what's the big deal with the metaverse, make sure that you watch this video because I'm not just going to explain to you what the metaverse is and give you different perspectives, but I'm also going to tell you a little story about technological development of the human species and explain to you what's the relationship between the invention of the telephone and the metaverse. Welcome to the metaverse. This term has become incredibly important in our digital lives ever since Mark Zuckerberg announced the rebranding of Facebook to Meta in the October of 2021. And ever since, billions and billions of dollars have been poured into this industry, even though most companies and investors have absolutely zero clue about what the metaverse is because it's currently seeking its path. So what is the metaverse and why is that important? One aspect or one approach to explaining the metaverse is people saying it's the new internet, it's the next generation of the internet. I think that's a bit misleading. So let's take another look at it. Most of these companies and influencers and experts are trying to say that the metaverse is a, is a point in, in space. It's a virtual space where you go in and do stuff. However, I think that in reality, the metaverse is not a point in space, but a point in time. A point in time when your digital life becomes more important to you than your physical life. Just think about it. Where do you make your money? On the internet. Where do you spend your money? On the internet. When was the last time when you used cash for a transaction? Did you use your credit card or Apple Pay or Google Pay? Yeah, on the internet. So what's happening is that today we spend more than 50% of our awake time looking at screens, being online. This has been a trend ever since the invention of the telephone that created the first instantaneous means of communication between two people separated by geographical location. Ever since, all we've been trying to do is to cross the physical barrier and bridge that gap between two distant places. With the advent of the internet, that has just exploded. And now we can FaceTime with friends in Tokyo, or we can order a pizza to my friend's place in New York from Budapest, it's not a problem anymore. The problem is that today we are doing that through using digital services that are not owned by us, which means that if I cut internet access from your life, you will be probably more screwed than if I cut your heating, because if I cut your heating, you can move away. But if I cut your internet access, you lose your job, you lose a way to spend your money, your quality of life will be set back by very considerable means. And the problem is that it's not up to you. So the metaverse is a point in time where companies are trying to figure out how to give you more and more services in exchange for your data, basically seizing control over your digital self or your avatar, as we call it in metaverse lingo. So there is a bit of a battle going on right now between Web2 and Web3 companies. Web2, like Meta and the other big corporations who are uh, aiming for the metaverse, are trying to create all-around services, gamifying the whole experience of you being in the metaverse, spending money in the metaverse, earning money in the metaverse, so they can get more data from you. They can monetize that to oblivion, while basically they, can get, they get to decide what you can or cannot do, like a cyberpunk dystopia. Web3 companies, on the other hand, are working to make a metaverse that's decentralized. A decentralized metaverse means that you do control your avatar. You do control who gets to monetize your avatar and you do control who gets to do anything, access to your data. It's all up to you. You get agency, you get social mobility, you get monetization strategies that are only within the realms of Meta or Google or Microsoft today. Imagine as if Meta decided to give you a revenue share of all the advertising revenue that they're making off of your own personal data. Imagine what would happen if the most intimate moments of your relationship that you posted on Instagram and Facebook get monetized and actually you would get a revenue share from that because that's what's happening. Pictures of your dog, pictures of your family, a video of you proposing to your girlfriend are being used to make money for the shareholders of Meta not you. Decentralized metaverses can help you get back that control, get back that agency, get back that social mobility. 
So what about that spatial thing, that, that point in time and point in space? The metaverse as an industry is merging from three separate industries. There is social media, which is why we can see companies like Meta coming into this, this space. There is finance, which is why we can see DeFi and all the other banks are coming into this space. And there is gaming. And if you remember Travis Scott's concert in Fortnite, which was a mind-blowing thing and millions and millions of people have seen it, you will understand how massively multiplayer online games are actually also becoming and creating their own metaverse. So there is an economic play here about who controls the assets in the digital space, which is basically the overarching trend of how the internet has been developing. But also on the, on the surface, there is this creation of a virtual world that is completely unified. And yes, it does have a spatial element because we want to recreate the experience that we have as human beings on Earth. And that is why my company, Next Earth, has created a digital replica of the planet while also making sure that the economic foundations are there so you get that control, you get that agency that I've talked about. And then, and only then, when you have that economic foundation, you can start bringing in a unified experience for all the things that you can read about the metaverse, which is why it's important when you look at metaverse projects to ask yourself, what's the main focus? Are they creating a VR game? Are they creating a fantasy location where I can sword fight with people with a VR headset on because that's basically just a fancy name for a video game? Or are there any economic advantages to me as an internet user to using and being and being active in that metaverse?